Hello, welcome to Juniper Level Botanic Garden, uh, the home of Plant Delights Nursery. It's a very special occasion right now. Our Amorphophallus titanum, the corpse flower, is uh, progressing ever closer to being in bloom. We think it'll be in bloom somewhere about the very beginning of August. Um, and I'm not going to tell you everything about it in this one video, but I want to address the issue of why we do not call it the world's largest flower. It's not that other people have larger specimens than ours, it's that this is not one flower. It is what is known as uh, botanically or in horticulture as an inflorescence. It's a unbranched inflorescence composed of many flowers. And uh, to explain the difference between a flower and an inflorescence, I brought a few examples. This is a crinum. This whole flower stalk and all the flowers all together are known as an inflorescence. You know, this is one flower. But um, in this arrangement, it is known as the inflorescence. Um, a family that is highly characterized by complex inflorescence is the aster family. The family used to be named the composite family, the compositae, but now it's the asteraceae. And what we think of as one flower is actually many different flowers, you know. And ma many of the members of the aster family have disc flowers, the little flowers that are on this uh, structure in the middle. And what we think of as petals are the ray flowers. Um, each one of these is a separate flower. And so the whole thing is called an inflorescence. But uh, I'll never criticize you for calling it a flower, but technically it is many flowers. Now, Amorphophallus belongs to a huge family, a largely tropical family, the Aroid family. It contains common trop tropicals like philodendron, um, monstera, pothos, spathophyllum, um, half-hardy things like calla lilies, um, and then quite a few hardy things like the aracema, the jack in the pulpits, and uh, you know, it, and elephant ears. This is the flower of an elephant ear. So it's a huge family. And they all are characterized by having a spadix, which is this central portion in the middle that we can see only the upper part right now. And then the spathe. And if you think of a calla lily or the spathophyllum flower, the spathe is very showy. It serves the purpose of a petal. Now, um, elephant ear flowers have this same structure. I'm opening the spathe, and you would never grow them just for their flowers. We grow ornamental forms for um, their beautiful and colorful foliage. And of course, the elephant ears are derived from the same plant that gives us taro, which is one of the most important food crops in the tropical world. So. I think maybe you can see the similarity. Here's the spadix. That's the spadix. Um, this is the spathe. This spathe is still enclosing the uh, spadix. Um, but when we when it, we open up a, um, a an inflorescence of the in the aroid family, we have the male flowers up above producing pollen and the female flowers down below, which will receive the pollen. Now, um, these are not yet mature, and so nothing's going on right now. But each little bump is a separate flower, and that's why we don't call the whole structure a flower, but we call it an inflorescence. Um, so if you've been confused by the description of this flower, <laughs> Lordy, this inflorescence, it's often described by people who understand it as the world's largest unbranched inflorescence because some flowers can have a branched inflorescence. Um, and 
even though the male flowers and the female flowers are on the same spadix, in some species they do not ripen at the same time so that um, they don't pollinate themselves, but an insect visiting the flower might, you know, inadvertently get some pollen on itself, fly to another flower, and in the process deliver that pollen to the female flowers of a different individual. And so once this spathe opens, you can peer down in the center, you know, the flower, the true flowers down in the center are still rather concealed, um, but uh, they will look very much like this. So that's a whole lot of words to explain why, um, you know, this is not a flower, but um, a really, really large inflorescence. Despite all that, reg our reg <laughs> regard disregarding all that, you know, just enjoy the spectacular beauty of this plant. Um, Amorphophallus titanum is a tropical species. There's, I don't know, a dozen or so species that are winter hardy in zone 7b to 8a and warmer um, that uh, are really fun and easy garden plants. Um, but the genus is largely tropical. Um, Amorphophallus titanum is native to Sumatra. Um, it's considered endangered in the wild, maybe only about a thousand plants remaining. Um, a big uh, threat to its continued existence in the wild is uh, the development of its native habitat into agricultural land, largely to produce, um, to grow oil palms, to produce uh, an edible oil. So uh, public gardens, botanical gardens, can play a role in its uh, perpetuation by growing plants up to flowering size and hopefully it'll set seed. I've, I've grown it from seed. The seeds are good size and, and very much like um, Brazil nuts, about that size and shape. Um, this plant is uh, bloomed two years ago and uh, oh, I'm not sure it has a date on it. Well. No, um, two years ago when it flowered for the first time, its tuber underground um, weighed about 20 some pounds. It's now up to 40 pounds. And hopefully it will uh, uh, continue to live after it manages to bloom because it often happens that um, it dies of exhaustion after blooming. And. Uh, we're going to be open when the, uh, the Juniper Level Botanic Garden and Plant Delights Nursery is going to be open um, for the few days that it, the flower is, the inflorescence is actually open when it's this big, beautiful burgundy skirt around the plant. And we hope you'll follow our podcast so you know just when it will be. But as I said, we're expecting uh, sometime really early in August. And the, the flower, the inflorescence, uh, is only fully in bloom for about two to uh, one to two days. So don't delay if you can come out and see it. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope to see you again in the future in the garden.